Hey, Mr. L. How are you? How are you? We've been done a lot of show in Eastern, a lot of historical show. And today, I think we're going to do something at Stone Hill College. We've never been there for the first time. And I think we have lots to show, lots to do there. What do you, you have in yes, mind? Yes, I, I think the, it's appropriate to begin a, uh, a show about Stone Hill College with the industrial archives that were donated by Arnold Tophius to the college because they are one of the rich resources of our country in industrial history. So we'll be looking at the Ames shovels in the, uh, in the basement of Donahue Hall and visiting in the hall that was once the mansion of Frederick Lothrop Ames. And then in succeeding shows, we'll get out into the college campus and explore what is now one of the leading colleges in the Northeast in a, in a and a good reason for Easton to consider itself a college town. I think a lot of times we don't really appreciate the fact that we have this academic community here. So now we can see it and experience it. For everything there is a season, says the song. And if you come over here to the Arnold Tophius Industrial Archives in the basement of the Stonehill College Administration Building, once the mansion of Frederick Lothrop Ames, you might change the words to, for everything, there is a shovel. Because here, in this cellar of the industrial archives, we have one of the largest collection of shovels probably gathered anywhere in one place on this earth. The museum of the Oliver Ames and Sons Shovel Company, Shovel and Tool Company, now not owned by the Ameses at all, but owned by an English corporation in Parkersburg, West Virginia where it's been since 1956 when the Ames Shovel Company moved out of Easton. But in its heyday from 1803 up until 1956 when the shovels were made here in Northeastern, the Ames family fortune was acquired from these rather innocent looking implements. You've seen the number plate, Shovel Town, Easton. This is what it means. This is where it all came from. Picture, if you will, the 19th century. Problem of moving earth, of building roads, of building canals, of building railroads. Bulldozers are way off in the future. Steam shovels are not even thought of. You want to do construction, you need an unskilled laborer and a shovel, preferably a shovel that he can lift along with the load on it. When Oliver Ames came to Easton in 1803, he thought that he had the answer to the construction business. Iron is cheaper than muscle, he said. You can wear out your muscles and never get any new ones. You can wear out my shovel and come right back and I'll sell you another one. And so Oliver Ames built shovels that were a little lighter than the British imports of the time. So you would be lifting the load on the shovel rather than just the shovel itself. And <coughs> shovels for everything, shovels for coal, Shovels for wheat, shovels for grain, shovels for dirt, for gravel, for digging post holes. For every purpose, there was a shovel. This shovel here is a lot older than the man holding it. Maybe 150 years older or 160 years older. Actually, Andre, I think you're only about 29. But, but, but this, this shovel, 
was uh, probably manufactured by John Ames, uh, the father of Oliver, down in his uh, shop in, in uh, what is now West Bridgewater, and there's a town park there where you don't want to try to take your canoe because there's too many rocks in the river. But the, uh, the water power turned this out, and, and you can, this is, is probably the oldest shovel in this uh, collection. Uh, the, uh, the other shovels that are quite old are this 1824 with a wooden D handle. Uh, hold the uh, handle up so you can see the letter D. Uh, just uh, if, if you hold it at right angles, just hold it parallel to the floor, you can catch the D, see, uh, in the handle. And uh, that that is a similar uh, blade to the to the one the 1788 uh, shovel. And I'll take that back. Okay. Okay. Here we have a Civil War entrenching tool. You can see where somebody has stepped on this to uh, shove it into the ground. You see a pick right here where we can soften up the dirt. We can pull out some rocks right here and dig ourselves a foxhole to keep the Confederate bullets away. Early Civil War entrenching tool and of course it was during the Civil War that a lot of contracts were made between the United States Army and the Oliver Ames Company. And of course it was after the Civil War that Henry Richardson came to Easton and built all those those buildings. So we can we can make a connection between that and Henry Richardson. The Ames Company was famous for its army entrenching tools. Here's one that dates back to probably around the First World War, with uh, a nice little label tacked around the handle. In 1942, the Ames Company was working on a shovel for the U.S. Army like this when the fighting in North Africa resulted in the capture of a German shovel, this one, which was sent to the Oliver Ames Company and with the, with the Instructions, can you duplicate this? Can you make this shovel or a shovel like it, like the German shovel? And the result was this one right here, which is even sturdier than the German shovel and got us through the Second World War. The latest edition, which is what the be all that you can be generation uses. It's made in Packersburg. Looks like this. It even has a little cutting device on the edge so that you can chop off a root if one gets in the way of your foxhole. And it's a versatile thing that folds up three ways instead of just one or two as they did in the uh, early 60s. Also over here we have this very interesting account book. You've heard the song, I owe my soul to the company store. <laughs> and this might say the, the same thing for some people who lived in Ames homes in Northeastern, who traded at the Ames st store, and who also had their accounts kept very, very accurately as they went through their lives in this, in this little book uh, as uh, numbers of uh, um, dollars owed. This map is an interesting map because it shows Northeastern prior to 1875. There's no Unity Church on it. There's no Richardson buildings on it. And the 
houses that are shown uh, belonging to the Ames Company cover practically the whole village of Northeastern. And of course, this is affixed to the account book with every house having a number and the numbers having tenants. If you've lived in Easton a long time, you probably have ancestors whose names are here in this account book. This picture depicts an outing that the Ames Company held for their employees in August 1934. There are very few women in this picture. They are seated in the front here near the sign. This was a gift to the Tophius Archives from Mrs. Elsie Erickson, and it's her brother, Charles Larson, that is pictured here. There's a little arrow to indicate where Charles Larson is. It was very generous of Mrs. Erickson to give me this picture because I have very little photographic material in the collection and welcomed a gift like this. Another gift I received was a letterpress. Bob King from the King Music Company visited the archives and found that we had 133 letterpress volumes. Now these letterpress volumes were a primitive way of reproducing outgoing correspondence. The letter that was to be sent out from the company was placed in a machine and Mr. King gave me this machine and it with a wet uh, tissue or a cloth, I'm not sure exactly what the process was, it was put in a press and the letter would appear on these tissue thin pieces of paper that are in these volumes. There's 133 volumes and they're all carefully indexed, which really is quite an asset to the collection. So that from 1876 through 1929, I have a record of all the outgoing mail. There's a lot of other interesting things here, Dick, that you might be interested in seeing. These records are arranged according to name and whatever you bought and didn't pay for at the time, I guess, was recorded. Um, such things as six and a half pounds of fish cost 26 cents back in 1836. 10 pounds of sugar, uh, oh, that was more expensive. It was $1.52. But there's all sorts of interesting items in these company yes. store records. Yes. And then you have some uh, newspaper accounts of Oaks Ames and the Credit Mobilier scandal. Now, I suppose we could devote a whole a whole program to that and that alone. These are remarkably well kept when you figure it's uh, late 1870s, that, uh, 1873 to 1880, these uh, accounts were published in the newspaper. And the family kept them. They, um, they're from all over the country, various newspapers that published accounts of the Credit Mobilier. There's a new book out, um, The Union Pacific, by Professor Mari Klein from University of Rhode Island. It was just published this fall. And in, the, in this book, the account of Oaks Ames and the Credit Mobilier really vindicates Oaks Ames. I'm sure the ancestors um, that kept this book would be very, very proud to know that historians have vindicated Oaks Ames. Yes, it, it shows us that uh, reporters uh, didn't invent the process of going after scapegoats in the uh, 1980s, but it's been going on for a long time. And Oaks was, was an unfortunate uh, uh, scapegoat in a, in a scandal-ridden uh, decade. And uh, later on, the Congress actually rescinded their censure vote mm -hmm. uh, of him when it was too late for him to know it. Because he died so soon after the censure. Uh, another interesting item here is an account book that Oliver Ames Jr. kept. There's an account book for Oliver Ames Jr. and Oaks Ames. They go from 1830 to 1845. In 1845, old Oliver took them into the company and it became known as Oliver Ames and Son. But again, this grown man, really, at this point, uh, kept very, very minute records. Every cent that he spent was recorded in this book. And also, Oakes, his brother, did the same thing. I guess their father was a hard taskmaster, but a successful businessman. Some of the early correspondence, when I took over the archives in 1978, were all in, arranged like this. They are folded in thirds, tied in packets, and arranged chronologically. 
This gave you very little input into the collection. Um, my students have been most helpful in that we've unfolded each one of these letters and arranged it alphabetically within the chronology. These were then placed in acid-free folders and placed in Hollinger boxes so that the early correspondence up through the 20th century is now available in chronological, in, in alphabetical order within the chronology so that we can come up with letters that um, correspond to the requests that we do get. What are some of the more unusual letters that you've found in your collection? Well, there's a, an interesting five-volume um, set of letter books that were written um, in the 1860s, 1870s. These were letters written to Oliver Ames um, from friends, from relatives, from business people. Um, there's a lot of letters in there from Oakes Ames to his brother, and they cover the period when Oakes was in Congress. Unfortunately, these, these are pasted in books, and they're very fragile to handle. Someday I hope to be able to microfilm them, but it's a very expensive proposition. But there's letters from Asigi in Harvard. There's a whole series of letters on the building of the Unity Church, from your Hooks Hastings organ, uh, to the plasterer who did the frescoes on the wall, to the man that installed the furnace, to the slates on the roof and the lightning rods that were installed there. And uh, I think there's five or six Ames from um, the architect who was an Ames. Yes. I think we should uh, pull those letters from John Ames Mitchell because uh, there's a lot of people that are interested in his career as a, an architect and only know of him from uh, his career as a publisher. True. Um, they're very easy to get, to get at and I'd be glad to do that for anyone that's interested in them. There's uh, also a, a long series of letters from people in the Union Pacific in these letter books. Um, Mari Klein, who did the book on the Union Pacific, used these letters, and they are cited in the book. He also um, used letters from Jay Gould. And just to see the stationery that Jay Gould used is kind of interesting. The, um, the collection is rich in all sorts of resources that haven't been tapped, really. Yes, it's a, it's a piece of the 19th century that, that's been uh, undusted off for a long time. People that are interested in postage would be interested in the fact that I have a lot of uh, stampless covers. The fact that um, I think it was postage was established in 1846, and I, I have letters before then that have the city and the amount of postage. Some of them even say steamer, like the steamer Oregon. It carried a letter from New York to Boston, and I was mystified as to. I thought Steamer, Oregon was the name of a town in Oregon. I soon found out that I was wrong. But there's a lot of those letters. There's some pre-postage stamps. Ten cities in the United States uh, had postage before federal postage went into existence. And New York was one of them. And I have two stamps from New York. They look very much like the federal postage that came into uh, being just a couple of years later. And they were hand canceled by someone just kind of scribbling over them. Those are interesting parts of the collection. The year is 1876, and in 1876, Henry Richardson hasn't yet come to Northeastern. He's still groveling away on Copley Square, building Trinity Church. And the Ames Shovel Company is exhibiting in the United States Centennial Exposition in Philadelphia. And to exhibit there, contribution to America's industrial greatness. They put together this display of shovels inside this cabinet, this corniced cabinet, topped with the words, Oliver Ames and Sons. And these silver-plated shovels gleaming in the interior of the case won a medal from the authorities of the exposition. Now the exposition in uh, Philadelphia was quite an affair, the world's fair of its time, to celebrate a hundred years of United States independence. And as our illustrious cameraman goes through and gives you a, 
a very good idea of the workmanship and the, uh, or the showmanship of these shovels, he eventually will get to the certificate that was awarded and some of the medals that were awarded uh, the Ames Company for the display. Now, where is all this? Um, well, the story is that in, I, I think it was 1969 when Tophius bought this uh, collection, 70, 73, you got it. But it was around the, uh, the late 60s, the early 70s, when Topius bought the uh, Ames Shovel Works. And upstairs in the, uh, in the large building on Main Street, the half-timbered structure uh, built by Roch and Tilden, which was the headquarters of the Ames Company, was this display, this display that had been made for the Philadelphia Exposition their prize, which you can see on the uh, screen here. Now, Tophius, seeing this, realized its value and realized the value of the tremendous collection of memorabilia and records of the Ames Company and donated them all to Stonehill College.
Yeah, a National Wrestling Alliance heavyweight champion. Um, is it Nature Boy Ric Flair? You got it. Woo! Right. Woo! Right, Josephus, you you're doing pretty good. All right, would then what's going on Would you happen to know what was Eric Weiss's stage name? Uh huh. Eric Weiss's. E H R I C H W E I S. I'll, I will give you a hint. I'll, I'll give you a hint. Oh, Obviously, nope, no. nope. Okay, you should wait for my hint. Do you, wait, you got one of us. Do you have something to stump us with? Yes, I do. Okay. What is the official language of Suriname, which is in South America? Suriname? Is that S U R I I N A N? That's correct. It, uh, Spanish. No, that's incorrect. It's Dutch. Dutch. Uh, you should have given the rest of us a chance. Because uh, <laughs> oh, well, I think thought I knew that would have been my guess, but hey. Okay. Hey, I think we might have to throw him in, in the pool. pool. Okay, Josephus. Okay, I'm in the pool. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay, thanks for what? Let me get you kids off. Okay. Thanks, thanks for, for calling. calling. All right. Bye bye. All righty. Okay. Uh, it used to be Dutch Guiana. That's why they speak Dutch. <laughs> I'm going to throw out another question, even though I'll leave that channel. What happened to channel one? I want to know who Abraham Zabruda was. What's his claim to fame? Abraham Zabruda. Okay. And I'm moving along. This is my last time with this question. What was Eric Weiss's stage name? And my question is, what is commonly held as the highest paid per hour occupation in the world? Like getting paid $3.50 an hour or $4.50 an hour. Not salary, but per hour. Mm. Okay, we'll go right to the phones. Hello, you're on the air. Who are we speaking to? <laughs> Hello. Hello, who were you speaking to? I was on air. All right. <laughs> oh, well. He was well. on TV. He was worried about how he looked. I mean, that's how he Combing his hair over the phone. I don't know. We have another phone we call. Have another phone call. Let's go. Hello, you're on the air. Are you combing your hair? No. All right, oh, good. good. Who are you speaking to? Chris. Hi, Chris. Oh, gee. Chris. <laughs> hey, take Ready. a look, Chris. What am I holding up? Pepsi, the choice of a new generation that can't... I, hope, I, hope, <laughs> I can see you have good taste. <laughs> I brought it. <laughs> um, okay, Eric Weiss's yes. name is Harry Houdini. Very good. You've been living with me too long. <laughs> I'm not going to even let you even... I don't want anybody to say collusion, so you can't even guess mine. I don't even know it. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't look in the book. Uh, <laughs> okay, what is commonly held as the highest paid per hour occupation in the world? Uh, well, it's not Neil's occupation. Mm. <laughs> I think that's a bit of a dick. I don't think it's really necessary, but... Um, I don't get paid by the hour anyway. Modeling? Hmm? Modeling? Nope, sorry. No. Good guess, though. You're up there. That's what I would guess. But, uh, I don't know. Do you want to stump us? Um, yeah, wait a minute. Of course she does. <laughs> wait a <Okay>. minute. <laughs> um, you get a chance to make your husband look bad. I mean, hey. <laughs> who... Look. What is Eric Arthur Blair's oh, stage name? Open. Eric Arthur Blair's stage yeah. name. Yeah. That's we, his, you know, Eric Arthur a, Blair is his first name. How dare you ask yeah. a question? We didn't even go over this at home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to guess uh, Richard Burton. Nope. No, that wasn't good. Um. <coughs> Danny. No, it's not no, Danny. Danny. No. You know that. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, well, it's okay. <laughs> Anytime. Um, hmm. I don't, have no idea. What is it? We, we're stumped. It's George Orwell. Oh. George Orwell. Wish I'd known that one. S no, wait a minute. She said stage name. Well, don't you mean his pen name? Well, I don't know. I said, you know, right, Eric Arthur Blue the name author he was born then. with. <laughs> Uh, while we ha de <coughs> anyway, before we cut you off, Chris, we'll uh, take the opportunity to wish your mother a happy 70th birthday. <laughs> Did you have to say the number? <laughs> That's not polite. So she's in the pool, yes, isn't Chris she? Yes, is in the pool. Uh, yes. She'll love you, Neil. <laughs> Just say, ha say happy birthday and uh, happy birthday, 70 years old. <laughs> You're a nice guy. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Chris. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. 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 I need a new question. And that is, if you've seen the movies, if you've read the books from The Three Musketeers, can you name The Three Musketeers? Ooh. And D'Artagnan is not part of the answer. All right. And, and my uh, question one more time is, what is commonly held as the highest paid per hour occupation in the world? Not salaried, but per hour. So, you know, like, if you're working minimum wage, it's three fifty-five an hour. What is the highest paid per hour? That's what I want to know. And I want to know who Abraham Zabruda is. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you a clue. It happened in the 1960s. And I want to know what happened to Channel One. Those two questions I have out, and we're off to the phones. Hello, you're on the air. I'd like 
to try to answer John's. Who are we talking to? Deidre. 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 All right. What do you think it is? A psychiatrist. Excuse me? A psychiatrist. Psychiatrists usually are paid, uh, well, I suppose you could say they're paid by the hour, yeah, but no, that's not it. Good guess. Good guess, though. Modeling was good, psychiatrist is good, but that's not it. Do you know what happened in Channel 1? Deidre? Is, are you there? Yeah. Speak to us. <laughs> is it a civil defense channel? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. Sean McClain's coming into the room with I'm a little kid. I'm a little kid. <laughs> I think we got to give it to her. That's close. All right, on May, May 6, 1948, the FCC set aside the Channel 1 frequency for use by the military. This took place before any station was allocated that position on the dial. I think you that's... You got it. Okay. Okay. Do you know who Abraham Zabruder is? Um, no. Okay. okay. So how's she doing so far? Well, she's got one right, and oh, does she have yours? She got one right. She has one, one right. right. Okay, and she has to Deidre. Stop us unless do you know? Do you, uh, you know the book Three Musketeers, right? No. Okay. No. Do you know the candy bar? Three bow. Musketeers. <laughs> um, no. Okay. Do you know the movie The Three Musketeers? No. Is anyone else in the room, Deidre? Uh huh. Okay. So you're gonna try to stump us. Uh, I want to know pool, what right? are the name of the Three Musketeers? What are their names? The Three Musketeers. D'Artagnan is not an answer for this one. Um. I don't know. Okay. okay. Try to stump Sorry. us. Then. Okay. Um, can I just add three musketeer things? Sure. sure. Try that one. Porthos. Porthos. Yeah. Um. Um. D'Artagnan. D'Artagnan isn't an answer because he was the fourth musketeer. I'm looking for the three musketeers. Uh -huh. And it wasn't Mo, Larry, and Curly. <laughs> You're on the right track, though. I will give you have one right. Uh. Porthos is right. Okay, can I try to stump you? Okay, go sure. ahead. <laughs> you already, she already got one, right? She, why, why, why does she want to go any further? Um, this is like a two and one question. Two and okay. one question? Okay. A two-parter. On the Statue of Liberty, how long is her index finger, and how, what's the size of her fingernail? Okay, how what? How long is her finger index? How long is her finger? 100 years. No, how long? Okay, and what is the size of her fingernail? Okay, now, are you, are you asking in terms of feet, inches, or yards? Um, feet. 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 Okay, her finger, I will guess, is 25 feet long, and the fingernail is 5 feet long. But that was my guess. Now the other guys have is, to guess. Was, she, was he right? No. Okay, was I close? I'll say her finger. Does it matter which finger? Um, yeah, index. Index. Oh, okay. Oh, the index finger. Oh, then he okay. gets another guess then, all right? Uh, <laughs> no, uh, no, I was thinking of the I'll other say finger. 25 feet and her fingernail is 3 feet. Nope. Am I close? I'm not saying. I'll say the finger is <laughs> 10 big... feet long and the fingernail is 4, four feet long. No. It's... Okay, what is it? <laughs> what is it then? Um, it, her finger is 8 on, and her fingernail is 13 by 10. 13 oh, by 10. I think she threw us a curve there. 13 by 10. She did, she chose feet. Yeah, well, that could work. <laughs> 13 by 10, was that 13 by 10 inches? She had long nails, all right? <laughs> Three. All, right. All, right. all right. All right. Okay, okay. Deidre is in the pool? Right. Yeah. Okay, Deidre. All right. Thanks for calling in, Deidre. Okay. You're finally in the pool tonight. <laughs> and the prize for that is a free membership to the Video Paradise. Remember that. Uh, I hope you win. I think John's going to take the opportunity. Uh, Deidre, thank you for calling. John's going to replug the pri prizes. Okay, replugging the prizes <laughs> in the middle of the show. Right, right in the middle of the show, he's okay, going to well, tell. Thank everybody for their great gifts. Absolutely. Which Absolutely. keeps the show running. And again, if you're somebody out there who wants to have you be a sponsor of Triviality, please help us out. We need all the help we can get. All right. <laughs> Here we have tonight, already won on the stumper, was the $10 gift certificate to the music machine at five, uh, 350 Depot Street in Southeastern. I got that right one of these times. And a $20 gift certificate off of Home Sitting by Hudson Photography Studios. And that was won tonight by Ann, I believe, was it? Yes. Yes, Ann won that. Now, if you get our... Uh, what we call a triple whammy, what you win is a membership to Video Paradise, 
That's at 620 Washington Street in Southeastern. And a five dollar gift certificate to Andre Erdi's Carfures, okay, at 272 Washington Street. As a matter of fact, Andre is in the studio tonight helping us on camera. Hi, Andre. And if you win the pool, you get the free membership to Video Paradise. 995 value, 620 Washington Street. Those are the prizes. All right, here are the questions. One more <laughs> okay. time. Name the three musketeers. D'Artagnan is not an answer. <laughs> Who was Abraham Zabruda? What's his claim to fame? And he ran off with Channel One. <laughs> <laughs> Channel One was already guessed. Uh, I want to know also the three Westons that achieved number one. It's only happened three times, and it was in the, I don't think it was in the 60s, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe early 70s, mm -hmm. 50s, 60s. That's when it happened. Okay. okay. And uh, my question is, uh, what is commonly held as the highest paid per hour occupation in the world? That is, per hour. Not salary like doctors and lawyers and stuff like that, but per hour. And who's on the phone? Who we Hi, guys. Hi. Who are we speaking to? Chris. Hi, Chris. Do you think I could answer the question, please? Give it a shot. On Abraham Sabruto. Yeah. yeah. Was he um, the camera crew member for ETV? No. No. A good guess, though. Pretty close. On the right track. Okay, um... John, what was your question again? My question is, what is commonly held as the highest paid per hour occupation in the world? Per hour, not salary. Um, was it a T-bus driver in Boston? <laughs> a T-bus driver in Boston is a good guess. <laughs> but no, no, you'd think if they were that well paid, they'd be a little bit more cheery. But... No. Um, was it a movie actor? No, they don't get paid per hour. They get paid um, a, what do they call it, a set fee, basically, usually, or a fee plus percentage. So they don't get paid per hour. How about a stuntman? A stuntman? No, that's not it either. Why don't you try Chris's Okay, question? can you name the three musketeers? Um, Could you step away from your what, television? What's that, what's that loud noise? That's step away feedback. From the TV. If you step yes. away from the TV just a bit, we won't get that. Um, Ned, Nederlander. I beg your pardon? Can you name the three musketeers? Um, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't think I can. I, right. I, I just can't do it right now. Okay. Do you have a question for us? Uh, oh, yes, I do. Who sings, who is the female singer who, songs, who sings the song Spanish Eyes? Spanish Eyes. <laughs> you too? You too sings it. Um, <laughs> In that girl's doll. Yeah, well, um, I don't know who else would sing it. <laughs> Have no idea. Tiffany. Tiffany sings it. Surprised you guys didn't know that. Oh, uh, well, you know. So are we. <laughs> yeah, we're just shocked as you are. Okay, thank Thanks you for, for calling. calling Chris. Bye bye. Bye bye. Take care. All right. Okay, I, I didn't want to say this while he was on the air, but he was making a mockery of the question, Abraham Zabruder, and he, he did stumble onto a little piece of the answer, although there's a lot more to it. He was a cameraman, but not for ETV. Why is it so significant? Also, I'm going to give this last caller one shot at this, last, this question one last time. What is commonly held as the highest paid per hour occupation in the world? Chris? And last time, name the three musketeers. And you're on. Who are we speaking with, please? Hi, this is Jim again. Hi, Jim. Jim again. Hey, I got the three musketeers. All right, who are they? Porthos. Yep. Atheos, or uh, A-T-H-O-S. Yep. And Aramis. Very good, Jim. Right. Sounds like Okay, hard. and the uh, most highly paid occupation per hour? I don't know, but I would think that might be a ship's pilot. Nope. No? Nope. Do you know <laughs> who, uh, <laughs> Sorry. Do you know who Abraham Zabruder is? Uh, What's his claim to fame? No, I, I heard that name before, but that's one of the things I didn't write down in my little book of uh, information. Ah. Okay. See, now I thought for sure you'd get this one because I know you know where to look. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, you're you know, right. And you, I didn't write it down, and I'm ashamed of myself. Do you know the three Westons? The three what? Three Westons to achieve number one over the years. Only three uh, shows have ever achieved number one. Let me see. Uh, Yellow Rose of Texas, maybe? No, no. TV shows. Oh, TV shows. How about Bonanza? Um, the Virginian and Rawhide. No, nope. you had one right. Two wrong. 
So I don't really want, I don't think I should say it because it may spoil it for someone else. Oh, that's okay. One out of three right, though. That's Do you have a right. question for no, us, too? Next one. I got one for you. Okay. Right. When, on the, this is a MASH one, all right? MASH okay. question. When uh, Hawkeye and the rest of the gang go to Seoul on vacation, yeah. what's the name of the uh, hotel that they stay at? Uh, the Seoul Hilton? Nope. It's my guess. I don't know. Um. <laughs> Come on, Neil. You must know. <sighs> Put all pressure on you. You're a TV buff. Yeah, but I haven't watched MASH in years. Uh, when they go, I don't know. Was it, is, it, is it a famous like to do name or would you have to know it exactly from the No, show? you'd have to know it because I think it only comes on I don't I think it's a fictional uh Oh. No way. Don't don't know. Don't know. Called the Pink Pagoda. Pink, pink Pagoda. Ah, the Pink Pagoda. Still right. doesn't ring a bill. <laughs> okay, you didn't get one of our questions, but you yes, did. He did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yeah, he got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, right. 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 I give. All right, I give. <laughs> <laughs> well, and we will give you John's address after the show, and you may want to meet him outside. <laughs> right. Thanks, Neil. Neil won't be on the show anymore. Um, <laughs> okay, boys. I'll see you later. Take it easy. Thank you. Uh, All righty. I'm giving out this answer here. What, what is what? commonly held as the highest paid per hour occupation in the world? It is lecturing. People who lecture. Give lectures ah. are generally held to be, and of course, college professors will not believe that, but that is true. So my new question is... What two months contain oh. equinoxes? <coughs> what two months contain? Okay, my question is, who was Abraham Zabruda? We've already established he was some type of a camera man. And Life Magazine is another clue with this, uh, to this question. And I've also thrown out three Westons to achieve number one. Mm -hmm. And Chris's question? My new question is, Ron Nasty, Stig O'Hara, Dirk McQuigley, and Barry Wom make up the fictitious group, which is a parody of the Beatles. What is the name of that group? Yeah, we'll go right to the phones. Who we got calling, please? Hello, this is Arnold. Arnold, you're Arnold. back. How was the filming? I'm back. I, that was an imposter. I don't know that girl. Oh, okay. Ah, it wasn't your sister. Hmm. Sure wasn't Maria calling in just to, you know, get her voice on? No, it was not my darling wife. Okay. Okay. Arnold, do you know who Ron Nasty, Stig O'Hara, Dirk McQuickly, and Barry Wom? Do you know what group they make up? Um, the, the Dead Kennedys? Nope. That would be a terrible thing for you to say. It's one you're not kicked out of the family for that. No, it doesn't have happened. Okay. Yeah, who's going to kick you out of anywhere, right? <laughs> That's okay. exactly right. What two months contain equinoxes? Um, November and Tuesday. November and Tuesday. No. Oh, <laughs> no. Tuesdays are day. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Well, try Neil's question. Do you know who Abraham Zabruder is? Um, Mohandas Kalam Chan Gandhi. Close. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have a question for you. Wait a minute. Right. We told you the rules. You have to guess one of ours or forget it. No. <laughs> All right. Well, let's hurry it up. Ask us a question. Ask us a question. <laughs> okay. Who played Lumpy on Leave it to Beaver? Frank Bank. That was the question asked last week. Oh, no. We asked him. <laughs> I thought I had a great stumper and you guys got me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for calling. I'll be back. Okay. Bye. All righty. <laughs> Okay. Show from week to week. Otherwise, okay. you lose. We need a break after that. <laughs> <laughs> <That's all. laughs> all right. Okay. Yeah. Should we answer the phone? <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> Who's on the line, oh, please? Who are we speaking to? Bob. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. How are you doing? Pretty good. I've got an answer for uh, Abraham Zabruda. Who okay. is he? He was the amateur cameraman who caught John F. Kennedy being shot. Dallas, Texas. You got it. All right. Woo. Good not deal. bad, The Bob. only film by Zabruda was that he was, the only part about him, he was a, not a professional filmmaker, which you said he was, he shot 15 seconds, that's the most famous 15 seconds on camera in history, or of the century, or whatever. But you are right. Okay, how about this one? What two months contain equinoxes? Um, June and December. Nope, those are solstices. Nice try, though. Interesting. Try question. Okay. Ron Nasty, Stig O'Hara, Dirk McQuickly, Barry Wom make up a fictitious group which is a parody of the Beatles. Can you name that group? Mm, no, I can't. Hmm. Do you want to stump us since no, you got one of our questions? Answer, right? okay. <laughs> someone, did someone answer the question about the, um, 
You got questions? No. Go ahead. Give it a shot. How about Bonanza, Rawhide, and Gunsmoke? Nope. You got two of the three right, though. And I'm not telling you which two. <laughs> hmm. All right. So, have you got a question? You've got a question for us, you yeah. get in the pool. Um, the TV series, um, Me and Uncle, mm -hmm. their arch enemies were called Thrush. Right. You know what Thrush stood for? Oh, oh and I saw that in a book a couple of days ago, too. A lot of good it does us now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I can't remember it. The Ooh, okay, T H V H overthrow hierarchy. Some um, kind of overthrow of the civilized world, the underworld. Something. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I used to know that too. <laughs> sure. sure. Okay. What is it? Give up. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we get up. Up. Like, tell you now? Yes, yeah. please. Technical, technological hierarchy for the removal of undesirables and the subjugation of humanity. I was. Oh, right. I started out right. Well, let's tip your tongue, right? right. <laughs> we get you. You get. You make it in the pool. Okay, Bob. Good, Good enough. Thanks for playing Triviality, and I hope you win. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna do try one little thing. On the last ten minutes of the show, we're gonna ask people if they like it better the way we've been doing it. Getting more people on to see if we get any feedback. You think we really should ask opinion questions? <laughs> Isn't that pushing it just a bit? All right. What two months contain equinoxes? And I still got the three Westons to achieve number one, and I got to throw one more out because I've been going on the two question. Three presidents who went to college. Yeah, I had to get that president one. Went to college west of the Mississippi. Who are the three presidents? And Chris. Mm -hmm. What is the parody group based on the Beatles that features Ron Nasty, Stig O'Hara, Dirk McQuigley, and Barry Wom? And who's playing? Who's on the line? Dig. Dave. Dave. Dig. Dig. D-I-G. Dig. Dig. Yeah, I got the one about the Westons. Right. Yeah. Gunsmoke. Yeah. Bonanza and yeah. Wagon Train. You got it. Woo, oh, Jeez, I'm getting killed tonight. Look at the floor. Oh, <laughs> With strewn bodies of questions. Did you watch Jeopardy last night? Yep. You know. <laughs> oh, is that where you get your questions? <laughs> oh, the secret's out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got to pull out trying this one. Alex Sivak. <laughs> <laughs> what two months contain equinoxes? I only got one question. Summer? Two months. No, uh, no, uh, Two months. July? No, no, no. June? Say June. June? June? Wait, June no. and December. No, you should have stuck. Larry in the background? Yeah. You should have stuck <laughs> Larry, with... Larry, Larry, Larry. You should have stuck with July, even though that was wrong, <laughs> too. <laughs> uh, no. But, <laughs> do you know Chris's question? <laughs> the, what is the parody group based on the Beatles that is made up of Ron Nasty, Stig O'Hara, Dirk McQuigley, and Barry Wong? I don't know, but I gotta stump you guys here, because I don't wanna get Wait a minute, we wanna ask you our question first though. Do you like our new format? Yeah, I love it. I love it? Just for other people win. We're we're only here to serve. Okay. Right. We we this is your show, not so, ours. That's interesting. We're here to serve humanity. <laughs> Wait, is the rock room Sasha Pepper? Okay. Is it? Excuse me? Is it Sasha Pepper, the rock group? Uh no. 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 Alright, it was just one. No, actually the name the name of the group is the Ruttles. Which featured Eric Idle as uh, Dirk McQuickly. Okay, so stump us. Go ahead. All right. Okay, this is an approximate. It's a two-part question, right? Okay. Approximately, how many people are there in South America? Oh yeah, <laughs> we're uh, gonna get this one oh, big. Roughly, like approximately, <laughs> roughly. Uh, how would he give us a hundred thousand, a million each way? How many people are in South America? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. This might be one of those no, trick know, questions. Yeah, no, but roughly how many people were in South America? It might be a trick question. We better watch out. How many people yeah, are in the world? Um, what, 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 what's it, what would the population up to the, what, four billion now or something? It just popped over five billion. Five billion, okay. Um, 850,000. I mean, 850 million. No. No. Am I high or low? Uh, hi. Hi. Hi, okay. Hi. Right. hi, how are you? <laughs> Um, <laughs> your turn. Uh, my turn, huh? Oh, okay. Uh, 650 million. No. Okay. No. Is he high or low? Uh, why? Uh, he's high. It's too close. He's high. He's high? Okay. All that right. Explains a lot. Now it's your turn. It's up to you, right here. <laughs> I want him to take a drug test. Okay. Um, 
What was the last guess? 850 million? No, mine was yeah. 650 million. 650 million, and that was high? That was high. That was high. 650 so million? Got, uh, long, 500 long. million. No, the correct answer is 240 million. Really? Oh. All right. Whoa. All right, Dig, you got the uh, you get, Western question, mm -hmm. and you stumped us, so you are in the pool. Thank oh. you. Thanks for calling. All right, thanks a lot. No problem. All right, and we have another and caller. Another caller. And I have to throw out a new question. Okay. My new question is, from the James Bond st series, what does the word Spectre stand for? Spectre, which was the evil organization from the James Bond series, what do the, the letters in the word Spectre stand for? And my question is, three presidents who went to college west of the Mississippi, and I got one more that I'll throw out. It'll be my last question. I'll have to think of someone. Yeah. I'm not good, good at that, am I, John? I'll bar you. So I'll uh, I'm not, I mean, I, didn't I used to do it when I used to be on the other end? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When the Smothers Brothers was replaced over 20 years ago on CBS, what show replaced it, which is in, still in production today? All right. Yeah. My question is, what two months contain equinoxes? Equinoxes. And who's playing? Hello? This is Jim. Hi, Hi Jim. Jim. Hi, um, I know John, so thank you. Okay, give it a shot. March and September. All right. Okay. Great. Hey, I have one for you. All right. All right. Do you have any other questions? Uh, um, no. <laughs> okay. Do you like our new format? Yeah. Did, Good. Did you have an easy time getting in? No. No? <laughs> Sorry. All right. <laughs> we're trying at least. We're trying. I think we're going to have a, a better ra better list anyway. <laughs> okay. So okay. Go okay. Us. What's the third largest South American nation? Third largest. Third largest, third largest gotta go, nation. It's got to be Argentina, well, no, it's Brazil, Brazil, Argentina, Argentina and uh, Bolivia, I say. Am I right? No. Colombia. No. no. Ecuador? Nope. Uruguay. <laughs> Venezuela. No, nope, no. Nope. Chile. No. <laughs> Canada. <laughs> okay. I mean, can we I give up? It? I, yeah, yeah, we, we give, give up. up. Peru. 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 Why didn't you right. guess Peru? <laughs> yeah, blame it on India. Go ahead. That's good. I like hey, it. Well, you it. got us. You got us. All right. Jesus, Jim. 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 Last initial, Jim? A. a. Jim A. I think we've got so many go. people in the pool, we may be able to pull two names out tonight. And you... Actually, that's not a bad idea. We Chris, can pull. We have, uh, Chris has some extra prizes, and we may right. pull two names out. We're really breaking from tradition uh, tonight. Right, yeah, we're getting pretty extravagant now that we've got some sponsors. <laughs> Okay, and okay. we're going to the phone to the next question. Right, we'll roll right on to the next caller. Oh, oh. I talked to this person before. Oh, Hello. Is there no caller? Wait a minute. They're being switched oh, over. All right. Okay, okay, here we go. Hello. Hello, you're on Hello. the air. Hello. Hello. Who's Who this? To? Beth. Beth? Did um, someone answer the question about the equinox? Yep, yeah, that's, they did, that's Beth. Gone. Oh, okay. So right. I have to give you a new question. How's that? Okay. All right, now I have to find a new question. Okay. <laughs> All he's finding is new questions. Okay. What, what animal has the most <laughs> muscles in its face? What animal has the most muscles in its face? Gorilla. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll bet you somebody feels pretty foolish right now. Uh, Do you know um, <laughs> the three presidents who went to college uh, west of the Mississippi? No. Do you know what TV show still in production today replaces some others brothers 20 years ago? No, I don't know any other questions. Okay. okay. Do you know what the word Spectre stands for from the James Bond series? What the letters yeah, stand for from that? Like to. <laughs> Do you like our new format? <laughs> Are you still there? <laughs> Speak to us. <laughs> Are we live? Is this mic on? What? Yeah. Spectre? Do you know what it stands for? I think we... I think she's out call. in zombie land, so we should we'll move on. To, we're gonna have we to have five minutes left. Thank you for left, calling. And we only we have, have five minutes left. I think if we do this quick, we have time for two more calls. If we do them quickly. Yes. Okay. Direct me quickly? Yes. Okay. Hello, Hello. you're on the air. Uh, this is Jim again. Hi, Hi Jim. Jim. Jim again. Yeah, I'm hot tonight. Well, what does you. Spectre stand for from James Bond? I don't know. Uh, right. Smothers okay. Brothers? Smothers Brothers. Hee-haw. Right. right. Jeez, I'm losing them all tonight. You know what three presidents uh, went to college west of the Mississippi? I don't know. Okay. What animal has the most muscles in its face? The human. Right. All right. Ooh, he's got two. He's in the pool again. Hey, I only guessed at that one. <laughs> you only guessed at that one. <laughs> All right. What's Sergeant Sol uh, Schultz's first name on? Uh, 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 oh, I know this. I, sh I used to know this. Sergeant... Um, I know his cousin's name is Wolfie, or his nephew's name is Wolfie. Uh, um, his first name. Yes. Oh. Hmm. It's something German, too. Gustav. 
Yeah, it's a German name. That's all I'm giving you. It's not it Gustav. Is, it, is, it is a German name. And when you say it, I'm going to say, oh, I knew that one. Is it Gustav or Yo oh, Johan? What? I can't hear you. Is it Gustav? No. Johan? No. Hans. I think it's Hans. Yep, that's it. Hans. 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 Yep. Hans. Oh, Hans. All right, I'll give you another one. This oh, is a trick one now. <laughs> this is a trick, <laughs> a trick one. one. What was the other one? Uh, uh, no. The commander of Starlog 13. And it wasn't Colonel Quink. What about him? The first one? What was the name? Who played? No, wait a minute. General Burkhalter? Uh, <laughs> who was the commander of Starlog 13? And it was not um, Colonel Quink. When? The, the original commander? No. Oh. He didn't. He wasn't on all the time. General Burkata? No, he was a general. The commander. The commander. Not commandant. Commander. Ah. Um, well, it, it couldn't have been... Uh, Puzzled. It couldn't have been the, the, the Gestapo guy. <coughs> Major Hochstetter? No, you're way off. Hey. Burkata's sister. <laughs> Who was it? I give up. Pilma? <laughs> All right, I gotta give it to you. All right. It was Colonel Crittenden. That's oh, oh, right. Oh, all right, yeah. Okay, That's yes. Right. The commanding right. officer. Right. He, was he was snuck in and out two or three times. He was That's captured like right. two or three times. You should, you should have told, asked us who the co commandant of the enemy was. That's not a fair oh, question. That, I didn't have right. a comment on it. Well, anyway, Jim is... Wait a minute, he didn't stump us. He doesn't get in the pool. He answered to me. You're in the pool, I think, three times tonight. Three weeks ago, you asked a question. What fictional queen was eaten by dogs? Oh, we had this last week. Gary asked it. You never gave the answer. No, you have to get it from Gary. We don't know. We got We got to get one more caller on, right? Yeah. Thanks for calling. Good talking to you, Jim. Okay, next caller. Next caller. Hello, you're on. Hello, hello, you're on the air. Hi, this is Pam. Hi, Hi Pam. Pam. And I have the answer to the president question. Okay, let's have it. Nixon, Ford, and Kennedy. Nixon, Ford, and Reagan. Wrong. Ah. Oh. That's wrong. Wrong. Yep. <laughs> okay, Pam. Close. Are you familiar you with one, uh, almost cleaned me out. Pam, are you. What? You almost cleaned me out. This is my last question. Oops. Um. <laughs> which one's right? One of them. One. <laughs> one. Okay, Nixon's We're not right. You. We um, I have no idea. Okay, try this one. This is a new question. What is the most common street name in the United States? Would that be Washington Street? Nope. Maine? Nope. Oak? Nope. South? Nope. We don't know. All right, try Chris's question. What's your question? Okay, from the James Bond series, what does the word Spectre stand for? They were the evil organization from James Bond series. You know? Don't know. Don't know. Okay. Can you get a question for us? Quickly, because we only have a couple um, minutes. Um, yeah. Two minutes. We're going to take another one. When Hard Collins opened this in, um, one. 1636, it didn't, it, its name was not Harvard College. What was its name? Hmm. 16, what? While we're think, 16. Um, while we're thinking, uh, we want to ask you, do, what do you think of the new format, Pam? Did you have an easier time getting in? I had a lot easier time getting in. Oh, good. Good. So we've gotten mostly yays and only one nay. <laughs> All right. Um, All right. Harvard College, it was it called uh, Trinity? No. All right. Mm, Boston College? No. Oh. <laughs> Harvard What's the, what's the lady? Harvard Seminary? What's the lady nope. College? Rad Vassar? Radcliffe. <laughs> nope. Okay, well, I give up. Newtown. 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 Ah. Okay. Well, we have uh, one minute one left. One minute left. We're we have to throw out questions. questions. Thanks for calling in, okay? Not in the pool. What? I'm not in the pool. No. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, she, did she, she, no, she didn't get a question. Wait, no, right. she didn't. She, okay. Okay. All right, we're but sorry. we got to go. we got to draw the pool before we go. All thanks, right, thanks for calling. For calling in. All right, the uh, word Spectre from the James Bond series stands for Special Executive for Counterterrorism, Revenge, and Extortion. <laughs> the three presidents were Hoover, LBJ, and Nixon. And any comments on the show? I'm sure Chris, you can write your letters to Chris Davis and we'll try to make the show shot, better shot, for square, you. Square, Northeastern, don't ask the zip, I don't know. <laughs> Three, five, six, and I'm not giving the answer to my question. <laughs> oh, you're going to hold it till next week? Yes, yeah, I am. I was okay, going to do that too. Okay, shake us up real good. We're going to draw help. two people, two people's names, and they're going to win a gift certificate to Video Paradise. Good for a free membership in 995. Jim the Bathroom Man. Jim ah, the man. he's one of our winners. You want to zoom that camera in so we can really see that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the winner, John. the other winner. Ooh, a lot of names in the pool tonight. Yeah. Your hand getting wet? Josephus. 
Josephus. All right. You are your winner. All right. Okay, so both of you have won. Uh, give a certificate to. certificate for free membership to Video Paradise, 620 Washington Street in Easton, and that's a 9.95 value. We have to get going. I'm John Vasnaskis for Neil Abrams and Chris Davis. Thank you for tuning in to Triviality. See you next week. Bye, all.